name is Neil Carmen. I live in Texas, but I've been traveling uh, for a long time across the U.S., Canada, and Europe, dealing with the cement industry. It's a very, very dirty industry. Whether they burn toxic waste or you burn conventional fuels like coal, petroleum, coke, they'll like to burn tires, plastics, municipal waste. It's bad because what winds up happening is a lot of very harmful, dangerous stack emissions. Um, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides, mercury, dioxins, lead, arsenic, a lot of very nasty chemicals uh, coming out the stack and going into the communities, going into the environment, the food chain. The testing is very flawed. I used to do this so I know the problems with it. Um, the testing is just a snapshot of what's happening, uh, of what's coming out the stack. Uh, it's sort of like a police officer showing up on, on the highway one day a year to see if anybody is speeding or not. But one of the biggest loopholes is that with dioxin and mercury, these plants don't have a routine monitoring program of what's coming out the stacks. You know, they'll tell you they're monitoring everything, but it's basically a lie. I went into these cement kilns and, and I've been dealing with their permits for 20 years with the Sierra Club and the permits are very weak. People living near cement kilns have a lot of problems. They have problems with the dust from the quarrying and from the cement uh, that's very uh, uh, corrosive. And I've been, uh, even in Europe about eight years ago, I visited a community a mile away from a giant cement plant and these people were tracking this toxic dust a mile away into their homes. I couldn't believe it. It, it was really very uh, tragic. Uh, you could open their cupboards and you could see this dust. I mean, so I told them, I said, you should not be having your windows open. You shouldn't be uh, wearing your shoes in your house and you need to keep your homes ultra clean because this do dust could also contain toxic metals as I mentioned, like cadmium, lead, arsenic, and other metals, depending upon what they're burning. Titan cement uh, should, you know, not want to burn any toxic waste or any municipal waste or any tires or plastics. But, but unfortunately, this is happening across, you know, the, the U.S. Uh, that these plants want to save on their fuel costs. That's why they do it. One of the reasons I've been doing this work for so long is because of the children. The children, the babies, they're very vulnerable uh, in their developmental systems, their genetics, and so if a child gets a, uh, exposed to mercury or a lead, for example, uh, we know that uh, that burning coal uh, from a uh, cement plant or a coal-fired power plant will release some lead into the environment. And uh, although we took lead out of gasoline, the problem is lead is a very harmful uh, neurological toxin uh, and, and what the um, doctors uh, I've met, like Dr. Phil Landrigan, he's a pediatrician in New York City at Mount Sinai Medical School. He's been researching lead in children for nearly 40 years. And basically what it comes down to is there is no safe level of lead exposure for a, a child. Zero is the only safe level. So if a plant is emitting lead into the air, it's going to come down. Lead does not break down. It's a metal. It's a toxic, heavy metal. And so, you know, where is it going to go? And children, of course, you know, little babies, infants like to get their hands uh, dirty and they stick their hands in their mouth. And so the potential for ingestion of even tiny amounts of lead is a serious concern. Now, mercury is another concern. So the children are a huge reason why you don't want Titan cement um, because it's going to put out lead, mercury, other metals and uh, those are just some of the contaminants that the children are very very sensitive to. When I worked uh, as a state official for 12 years one of the tragic cases I worked on was an elementary school near a large uh, complex, uh, refineries, chemical plants, and I was in all those plants, and the teachers were telling me, what can you do about it? Uh, the kids here get sick, and when they're sick, they can't come to school for three or four days, and so I did everything I could. I chased those plants at nights, on weekends, 
I became friends with the men in the plant who would call me uh, at home and tell me that somebody was doing something illegal. And so I went into those plants at night on the weekends when they didn't expect anybody, any inspectors to show up. And we, we uh, it involved um, lawsuits through the Attorney General's office. We did a lot. Now today, with the, uh, the way the state of Texas is run, they wouldn't have kept me on the job. They would have run me out of there. But I know the power of the law is there, but it's not adequately enforced. And so uh, my dealing with the problems of the school teachers at an elementary school and the people in the neighborhood, those were some of the people that inspired me to, um, to do more. Uh, to be concerned that I couldn't walk away as a state official uh, knowing that these kids were being uh, exposed to uh, very toxic chemicals like benzene and butadiene and styrene and, and getting sick. I, I met the parents, I, I met the children and talked to the teachers. And, um, you know, I heard the stories from the men in the plant about how bad it was. And then they'd say, well, Neil, when you show up out there and you're doing some kind of air testing, they get all nervous in here. They don't like it. And they tell us to stop cleaning these waste pits or stop doing that. So, you know, uh, but um, the bottom line is I found that the regulatory system at then and today, it does not adequately protect children's health. And I've looked enough at the Titan uh, perm air permit. It's got too many toxins in there that are not good for the children here in North Carolina. And so uh, you need to do everything you can to make sure that Titan Cement doesn't build the plant on behalf of the children uh, in North Carolina. Thank you.